Hi, this is Sir Lorkin, and this is a video on the wards or guards of Manuscript 133, the medieval German uh, sword fighting manual for the use of sword and buckler. And this is one of many historical treatises that describes wards or guards or custodia or positions that occur in the process of combat. Uh, 133, the author actually states that you will naturally use all of these positions in the course of uh, fighting with the sword and buckler because they occur naturally. And maybe not all of them are equally natural, but there's really something to this. These are not fixed positions. These are not rigidly defined uh, guards that will guard you against all attack. Um, but these are places that you will be as you pass through a fight, and it's important to know what to do from them and what you can do from them. And that's why we refer to them um, and say, okay, if you are in this position, you know what you can do from here, what you can't. Um, this is useful even if you are not going to set up and fight from uh, some of these guards very well. This is specifically going to deal with SCA armored combat with rattan, where all combatants are assumed to be armored, and so a simple cut from the weapon will not suffice. It must be a forceful blow uh, to end the fighter score point. And also where the knees, shins, feet, hands, and wrists are off limits targets, which does modify how the combat flows somewhat. If you want to use this stuff in any other way, it's going to change a little bit. There is a lot of scholarship on a variety of medieval uh, manuals that is much deeper and wider than mine. This is my interpretation of this material uh, for this context. So please keep that in mind. And if you have questions, please let me know. I'll be demonstrating with this little 11 inch buckler, which is not particularly historically accurate or anything, but it serves. And uh, instead of rattan, I'll be using this wooden sword, which has a clearly defined edge and flat an open hilt so you can see my hand. The uh, edge marked with blue tape is what I'll be using as the true edge aligned with my knuckles. The edge marked with white tape is what I'll be using as the false edge uh, aligned with my arm, the base of my thumb. And if, uh, if the buckler obscures what my hand is doing, you'll usually be able to figure out simply by looking at the edges of the sword. So to start off, uh, first ward. The, 133's first ward is one of those products of another uh, action. Uh, first ward starts with the sword leg forward, with the buckler not fully extended, and with the sword under the arm, edge up. Um, this is not a position I would want to start a fight from. I uh, would not want to advance in this position. But if you strike forcefully downward and miss or are deflected, you can end up here fairly easily, um, especially if you have swung past your target and you don't recover quickly high, your sword goes low, you can end up in this position. And that's one reason why the sword leg is forward is again, this is the product of uh, a powerful strike that has followed through and then recovered here. Um, this is not a place that you can easily generate great power with an edge blow, except in a very narrow range of movement. Uh, so it's a limited application for SCA combat. Um, this is more of a position to get out of. For instance, from here, you can withdraw your leading foot and get into another guard, whatever you might that to be. Um, second ward, however, is a more universal and practical uh, guard that you might actually wish to fight from more often. Uh, second ward normally features the shield leg forward, although you can go either one. Um, the buckler is extended in second ward and the sword is on the shoulder. 
This may be point down, it may be point up, but swords generally here on the shoulder. This is a cocked and ready position. The buckler is out in front, guarding the center line, and the sword is prepared, waiting to strike. And again, you can strike just about anywhere from this position, including extending directly into the thrusts. So it's a very versatile ward um, that I'm more likely to actually enter a fight from. Uh, third ward is very similar, except it normally has the uh, sword leg leading and the sword on the shield shoulder. This is again more of a result uh, than a plan, in my opinion. If one, say, is in second ward and strikes for the head and misses, one can end up here. I'm sorry, should have started out second, but stepping forward, striking, missing high, one can end up here in third with the sword here. Um, from here, you can throw a good solid offside fairly readily. That's pretty easy, especially if you can move the buckler, you can access low targets. Without losing the buckler at all, you can access high targets and strike down vertically. Striking on the onside is slightly less natural, but quite achievable. It's just a little bit slower and a little bit less versatile than second, um, where you have more freedom of action a little more naturally. Um, this can also be a ward to guard from the shield side if that's where you're being threatened. Fourth ward, uh, which these also have parallels in German words. Uh, second ward is considered similar to left Fontag in the German tradition. Third ward is sometimes considered very similar to right Fontag. Fourth ward is generally considered similar to just plain Fontag. Very really confusion. Um, but fourth ward can be left or right leg leading, or sword or shield leg leading. Um, but this has the, uh, some of the references, the guard of the head, this bit is the sword over the head. Um, the buckler can be extended or uh, collapsed. And this would again depend on what threat you're facing, what your opponent is doing. You're not simply going to set up here and just hang out all day. This, if your opponent is closing in, you might, uh, you might bring the buckler in more tightly to avoid being able to grapple with it, strike with it. Um, but this is similar to the guards that a lot of fighters use in SCA sword and shield combat with the sword over the head. Uh, you can thrust readily from here, strike a wide variety of targets. Um, this is usually a, a useful board. It, uh, it does tend to collapse your defense a little closer than many other buckler guards that will put your defense further out in front of you to cut off lines further away. So to move to fourth ward, you have to watch your footing carefully. If your defense does collapse in, you've got to maintain your range with greater care than, say, second ward where you're really keeping that defense further out. Um, fifth ward, uh, this is uh, sometimes referred to as corda longa or long tail in Italian sources. This will have the sword leg leading, the buckler extended, and the sword extended behind you. And this is a bait. This is unambiguously a challenge to your opponent that effectively says, come get me. Uh, because my, my, we look, my weapon is way back behind me. Um, this is typically going to turn into either an attack that comes forward, an attack where you exchange positions, taking the leading foot back, and that allows you to attack while giving ground if an opponent is uh, moving forward aggressively. It'd be very useful. It's also somewhere that you might end up if you're striking an offside blow and miss. 
and extend the back. So strike the long tail, stretching behind you. I find it easier to remember this one as long tail than fifth board, but these are the names that we have to work with. Um, sixth board is one that I find a little bit odd because it's not very comfortable and I don't make much use of it, but it's one of the established uh, wards in the text and it's one people sometimes lead with. This one's normally got the shield leg leading, the shield extended, and the sword is going to be drawn back by the hand about even with the ribs. This is not a terrible position. It's biased toward the use of the thrust. Um, it's, uh, it's not terribly fast or terribly easy to strike a good edge blow when you have your true edge down and your arm cocked in this position. From here, strike strongly. From here, you've typically got to take some sort of action to get uh, away from the disadvantage of your, short, your edge facing downward. In unarmored combat, this would be less of a problem, but in armored combat, where we want to be able to strike forcefully whenever we're using the edge, it seems less advantageous. Um, this is also a very natural position to end up with when you've extended into a thrust and you need to draw back, especially by keeping the, the buckler extended. This is getting you out, getting you disengaged from a, an attack, from a situation where you were tangled, and you can withdraw into sixth. So being prepared to be in this position is very useful. There's another guard that I prefer for this sort of situation, and we'll get to it a little later. Uh, let's see here. Uh, seven forward. This one's uh, also known as Langort, or Long, uh, long Point, Long Place. Um, in the German manual, it's also generally referred to as Albert. Um, this one is going to feature you got the um, uh, sword leg leading, and the buckler and sword are extended downward at about a 45 degree angle. This is another result position. This is a, a strike that lands down. And uh, from here, there are only so many really good options. But a thrust is a really good threat from this low position and yet the weapon is down where your opponent has to reach a little bit to engage it. If your opponent's just gonna step forward, if your opponent reaches down to engage your weapon to do something about it before they get you, it's very easy to withdraw it, to move forward, to control the line with the buckler while using the weapon offense. Uh, so it's not a bad position if you are fighting sword and buckler. If you're fighting against opponents with full-sized uh, shields, what we would call a tournament shield in the SCA, um, the lines to thrust are cut off more, and this becomes a less useful position to be in. So this is more of a position to move through in that circumstance than to attempt to fight from, in my opinion. Your mileage may well vary. Um, uh, okay, the variations of my uh, language. Like I said, this seventh word is also known as language. There are three variations of language besides the traditional seventh word or Albert version of it. Um, there is middle or extended language. This is the result of a, a strike that extends or a thrust that extends. The sword leg is forward. The sword is extended at shoulder level. The buckler is extended with the sword. Um, this is the result of either an edge blow or a thrust that has reached its full extension and uh, obviously not ended the fight yet. This is also a very useful ward to fight from with a slight bend to the limbs. You don't want to be extended as far as 
your blood can go. But the little within, also the sword position can vary so that you can change angle. The buckler sometimes crosses over the hand uh, to defend the hand, depending on where the opponent's threat is. Um, but middle language presents the very popular medieval threat of my point is on the center line, you've got to do something about it before you come at me. And uh, it is still a position where fairly readily you can strike with your edge. You can strike. Being extended is not too much of a penalty if your body is flexible and you're on your, the balls of your feet where you can quickly shift your momentum and uh, deliver power that way. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, upper line work. Well, this is upper version of middle. It is the sort of leg forward, the sword is extended high, the buckler is extended high. This is the result of an attack to the head um, and a high one at that, or you know, whether a, an upward thrust or a strike with the edge. It's not terribly different from middle languor, although by taking a higher line, it's a little less comfortable to maintain. It's a little less uh, flexible and a little less universal in my opinion. But it is a position where you'll end up if you make a, a powerful attack to the head, you're typically gonna end up in upper languor if you're maintain your buckler defense well. Um, let's see. Ah yes, and the special language of the priest. This is uh, the result of a powerful blow recovering. You still got that sword leg forward. The buckler is collapsed a little bit. And this is when the blow has extended and come all the way back. This is not a natural position uh, for most people, but this is where you might end up if that blow swishes cleanly through and there's nothing stopping it. Um, this might be the best way to, to show this position. Um, and it's really, it's cocked back in what feels rather awkward. Unless it's in motion, then it doesn't feel so awkward. It's identifying that middle position where the blow has extend it about as far back as you want it to before turning over. And at this point we have enough pieces of wards to kind of make a full uh, cycle of from second ward we can strike into upper languor, drop into middle, and then into languor, and then into the special language of the priest, and then into first ward. And we've gone through a full cycle of a powerful blow that takes us forward, reaches out, and recovers. In this case, to the underarm. Um, the cycle for the upper is a little different, and we'll get there shortly. Let's see here. Um, Walpurgis ward. Uh, Walpurgis is the name of a priestess, or, well, a woman, beg your pardon. The one in manuscript 133 that is referred to. Um, this is a, a close ward with the sword vertical and the buckler in. And uh, usually the, the shield leg leading. Um, to me, this looks like the ward of somebody who wants to box and wrestle. Um, but it's also somebody keeping things in close. Um, this might be a reaction to someone who is probing and testing and trying to take control of your buckler away from you, trying to uh, get the cross of you know, your sword and move it aside, the drawing in. From here, there's a lot that you can do, but your, your defense is closed in very near you, so this is a tricky position to be in if your opponent is in a range where uh, they can strike. You really got to get away. This is also a useful position to work with if you have closed inside your opponent's weapon. If you are in what we might refer to 
what we might sometimes refer to as A range. If you're in tight with your opponent and uh, you can't extend, you can't be in a big wide position. Um, being able to fight from here and to extend to other wards and positions from there is a useful thing. We don't see that ward referred to very often. It doesn't seem like it was uh, a particularly important or common one in the original texts, and I think that's fair. Um, uh, Middlebog, um, Fiddlebow. This one is uh, normally presented with the shield leg leading, with the shield extended, and with the arm across the, or sorry, with the sword across the shield arm. Uh, frankly, this more looks as much like a resting position as any to me, but this is also potentially a decent threat. You're keeping the sword extended where it can guard a wide variety of lines, but it can also quickly strike forward. It can quickly extend into the thrust. Um, it's, uh, it's not a, a situation that I see a lot of use for, but it, is occasionally, uh, it occasionally comes up. So now you know. Um, Halbschild or Flug. Uh, Halbschild means half shield. Um, other German texts will refer to this as Flug with a PF. Um, this looks similar to Middle Langort, but this is a little bit different. This is normally going to be right forward, um, buckler extended but low, sword extended. Um, oh, I've exchanged edges, I beg your pardon. Um, sword extended with the point up. This is a more defensive posture than, say, Middle Langort, which is either pressing, attacking, or the direct result of attack. You might collapse from uh, Middle Langort into Flug as a position that is a little less extended, therefore a little less exposed, um, but uh, stronger defensively. This will ward off more things a little more readily. Um, striking with the edge from uh, let's see. Uh, from help shield is a little less quick because you have the disadvantage of gravity having your true edge down but it's not hard to turn this into a good strike and your main threat here is going to be the thrust um, uh, crook or crutch um, this one is a little wild but it can be very threatening uh, which foot leads depends entirely on what you're guarding against. The sword is point down, true edge forward, the buckler is guarding the hand. And so you can see this is a little bit like a crutch, one might say. Um, if I'm guarding against a threat to my buckler side, my buckler leg will be back. And by keeping the leg away, I can ward against a whole lot. If the threat is to my sword side, I can cross the buckler over, and I've got a whole bunch of defensive options here. I can still thrust, I can raise up and present the point while inviting, um, which will typically make an opponent who is leading, leaning in wish to rethink and lean back. And from here, the sword can strike downward uh, with the edge not quite as rapidly as it can thrust, but it's still a good threat. Um, again, really no particular lead foot there. The lead is going to be either left or right, depending on where your uh, opponent's best threat is. And last is Ox. And this is what I prefer strongly to Sixth Ward, personally. Ox is not a 133 ward. This one is really used in a variety of German sources. And the name is used for more than one position, like several of these, like Um, But the way Ox is normally depicted, in my experience, is shield leg forward, buckler extended, sword with the true edge up and the point forward. Um, this is a great sheltering 
uh, position. This is basically this far from Feng Tak, or uh, rather Fourth Ward. It's more extended and will ward more things. It is a little less offense oriented than uh, Fourth Ward with the sword high, but it does allow for a quick thrust threat and it will ward off a whole lot of blows um, while allowing you to also still be ready for a powerful attack. And I find that one very useful. But once again, now we can look at sort of a, a cycle of movements. If we start from second ward and we attack into upper Langor and miss, we can recover into Ox, and from there into Fourth Ward, and from there into Second. All fairly naturally connected movements. Um, I hope that this makes sense and that these pieces fit together in a way that's intelligible. Please let me know if you have further questions, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to apply this. And once you try it, if you try it in slow work, it's much easier to get the feel for it. If you try to go for it at speed with uh, an opponent, uh, it is easier to fall into the routines of uh, ordinary SCA Sword and Shield, uh, which is not usually the best way to fight Sword and Buckler. Um, and the use of some of these things will be less. And again, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of use out of, for instance, first and third wards uh, in normal SCA fighting. But if you find yourself in this position or this position, recognizing roughly how you got there and roughly what you could do from there, at least having gamed through it mentally and done sort of the chess match, okay, what can I do? I could step away and open space and move to the... That's still valuable. Thanks. Hope this was useful.